well so uh, in part two uh, we gonna discuss about uh, the production again uh, with the two variables uh, like you can see here uh, with the production with two variable inputs and return to scale so this is the, our topic now when uh, we are using uh, two inputs uh, uh, both are variable uh, in our previous example one is uh, we are using uh, we were using two variables but one is fixed and the other one is variable uh, we are using two inputs uh, one is fixed and the one is variable but here we are using uh, again two variables but both are uh, two uh, inputs but both are variable uh, so we can see here uh, capital and labor so the one uh, input is uh, capital uh, uh, labor and the other input is capital so we created this chart so we see here one uh, labor two labor three labor four labor five labor and we see here that one uh, capital two capital three capital so we see that the combinations are like a one labor and one capital one labor or two capital one labor or three capital and one labor or four capital so we each column is reflecting like this uh, the second column is reflecting two labors and all these combinations of a, uh, a capital so isocont curve now what is isocont curve isocont curve shows all possible combinations of inputs that yield the same output and that's why we highlighted this with a yellow you see here when we are using one labor and five capital the output is 75 similarly when you use two labor and three capital then we have a 75 three labor and two capital then we have a 75 five labor and one capital then we have a 75 in this uh, we could uh, we can find in the broken but the broken values for the labor is not possible so we see so when uh, we get a, a curve uh, with these combinations of labor and uh, capital uh, we get a isocont isocont uh, is the same concept like a, a indifference curve uh, indifference curve where the utility is fixed here the output is fixed like 75 75 75 and what combinations of two uh, inputs so we can plot it here like you see here this these are isocons isocons uh, uh, like uh, these red lines are isocons so the first isocon is with a 55 output the second isocon is with a 75 output and the third isocon is with a 90 output uh, if the shapes are very similar like an indifference curve and we see that uh, with one labor and three capital we can produce a uh, with two labor three capital we can produce uh, b and c so production with two variables a set of isocont or isocont map describes the firm's production function output increases as we move from isocont q1 at which 55 units per year are produced at the points such as a and d <coughs> a and d uh, to isocon q2 75 units per year at the point such as b and to the isocon 3 90 units per year at point uh, such as c or e this e is also there and this is a c so these are the two points by drawing a horizontal line at a particular level of output say 3 we can observe diminishing margin return so we can and uh, observe a diminishing margin return Re reading the uh, level of output from each isocont as labor is increased we know that the uh, each additional unit of labor generates less and less additional output so isocont shows uh, the flexibility that the firms when uh, making production decisions so they can usually obtain a particular output by substituting one input for another and it is important for managers to understand the nature of this flexibility uh, there are some products which are very flexible like we can substitute one input with the other input but in the, uh, there are certain products in which the flexibility is very uh, less or very rigid we cannot change so much uh, mixture of the uh, inputs also in that case uh, the indifference curve is going to be uh, different uh, so diminishing minor returns even though both labor and capital are variables in the long run it is useful for a firm that is choosing the optimal mix that, that's what i was uh, repeatedly maxing the mix mix of input labor and capital uh, so optimal mix uh, mix uh, 
of our input to ask what happens to output as each input is increased with the other input held fixed. So because adding one factor while holding the other factor constant eventually leads to lower and uh, lower incremental output. The ISO count must become steeper as more capital is added in place of a labor and flatter when the labor is added in place of a capital. So they are also diminishing marginal returns to capital when labor fixed, the marginal product of capital decreases as the uh, capital is increased. So uh, this is the same thing what we discussed uh, in the part one. Now, when we are you, uh, producing uh, the output with the uh, two inputs, so minor rate of technical substitution, that's, a, that's what we call uh, MRTS. So that's a slope of the isocont curve. Like if you recall uh, from consumer maximization, uh, utility maximization chapter, the slope of the indifference curve is MRS, minor rate of substitution. Here we are finding out the slope of an isocont in which we are replacing one input with the other. So this substitution or replacement is called as MRTS, marginal rate of technical substitution. Uh, among by which the quantity of one input can be reduced with one extra unit of another is used so that the output remains same. So MRS is a change in capital input divided by change in labor output or we can write it minus delta K over delta L. Now delta K is a change in labor, a uh, change in capital and uh, divided by delta L is a change in labor for a fixed level of uh, quantity like quantity is same the output level is same because we are on the same isocont curve and we want to find out the uh, slope of that isocont curve so we see that uh, that the like a uh, indifference curve mrs is uh, decreasing uh, diminishing so mrts are also diminishing additional output from increased use of labor mpl that's a marginal product of labor uh, into delta L. A reduction in output from de uh, decrease uh, use of capital. So if we want to say that, okay, if we want one more capital to the labor, how much uh, changes? So that's a MPL, marginal product of labor uh, into delta L, how much labor you are changing. Uh, like if you are adding one more labor, so delta L is one but how much the output is increasing or the product is increasing, that is MPL. So MPL into Delta L. Same is the case when we adding one uh, labor and we are decreasing one capital. So what is the impact of that capital is MPK over Delta K. So MPL plus MPK into Delta K should be zero because we are saying that the quant output is same. The output should be same. So by arranging this uh, two terms, MPL into delta L plus MPK into delta K uh, is equal to zero. And when we rearrange, we get a term like this, MPL over MPK. You know, we discuss marginal utility of X over the marginal utility of Y. So it is, uh, but here we are saying uh, this is uh, MPK over MPL is equal to minus delta K over delta L. And this is MRTS, minor rate of substitution. So like indifference curve, ISO uh, quants are uh, downward sloping and convex. The slope of the ISO quants at, at any point measures the minor rate of technical substitution, the ability of a firm to replace capital with the labor uh, while uh, uh, maintaining the same level of output. Uh, on a isocon Q2, the MRTs fall from 2 to 1 to 2 to 3, 2 by 3 to 1 by 3. So you see here uh, from 2 to uh, 1 and then 2 by 3 and then we see here, uh, yeah, 1 by 3. So we see here. Production function, uh, two special cases, two extreme cases of production uh, function shows the possible range of input substitution in the production. Uh, process the cause of perfect substitutes uh, and the fixed proportion uh, production function uh, sometimes called as a leontief production function uh, fixed proportion leontief is a name of an economist who uh, who identify this uh, fixed proportion production function so fixed proportion production function uh, production function with l-shaped iso 
uh, quant so that only one combination of one labor and capital can be used to produce each level of output. The fixed proportion production function describes the situation in which method of productions are limited. So that's a L shaped uh, isocont and perfect substitute has a straight line isocont. So this is a isocont with perfect substitutes. When the isocons are straight lines, the MRTS is constant. Thus the rate at which the capital and labor can be substituted at each other uh, is the same no matter what level of output uh, is being used. Uh, point A, B and C represents the three different labor uh, capital labor combination that generate the same quantity of output. Uh, if it is Leontief function or fixed proportion uh, production function, uh, then we get the uh, isocont as a L-shaped. Uh, when the isocons are L-shaped, only one combination of labor and capital can be used to produce any given uh, output. Uh, and as at point A on the isocont Q1, uh, point B on isocont Q2, uh, the point C on isocont 3. Among Adding more labor alone does not increase output, uh, nor does adding more capital alone. Uh, now the real example, we can see here the production uh, function for wheat, food grown on large farms in the United States is usually produced with a capital intensive technology. However, food can also be produced using a very little capital, like in some countries uh, still uh, in uh, they are using man uh, manpower or uh, animal power to plow uh, the field or uh, do these uh, activities. And the lot of labor, several people with the uh, patience and the st stamina to work the soil. Uh, most farms in the United States and Canada where labor is relatively expensive operate in the range of a production in which the MRTS is relatively high with the a high capital to labor ratio, whereas farms in developing countries in which the labor is cheap operates with the lowest MRTS and lower capital to uh, labor ratio. The exact labor and capital combination to use depends on input prices, a subject that we will discuss in chapter 7 uh, in the next chapter. A production function for wheat isocon describes the production of wheat, uh, a wheat output of 3, 000, uh, 13,800 bushels per year can be produced with different combinations of land and labor and we see here uh, 100 uh, capital and 500 labor so we can produce 13,800 bushels of wheat uh, with the same like a 90 capital and 760, uh, 760 as a labor. So the minor rate of technical substitution between A and B is 0 0.04, 260, uh, 10 divided by 260, so we get it uh, 0.4. Now the last point which we want to discuss is return to scale. Uh, there are three different types of return to scale we can uh, assess. One is return to scale. Uh, increasing return to scale, the second one is uh, constant return to scale and third one is decreasing return to scale. Uh, return to scale rate at which output increase as inputs are increased proportionately. So return, uh, we calculate return to scale when we are using the word scale, uh, it means that we are increasing the scale. Uh, when we are using the word increasing to scale, it means we are adding up all the factors of production uh, in the same proportion, like we add one labor, we one capital, one uh, um, uh, all other factors of production, material, and all these things, one one percent increase, and then we will see that how much the output is increasing. For example, if you increase all the inputs by one percent, how much the output is increasing? So, if the output is increasing less than one percent, then it is decreasing return to scale. If it is increasing more than 1%, then it is increasing return to scale. And if it is increased exactly by 1%, then it is constant return to scale. So increase return to scale situation in which output more than double when all inputs are doubled. Constant return to scale situation in which output doubles when all inputs are doubled. And decreasing return to scale, decrease, uh, decreasing return to scale situation in which output less than double when all inputs are doubled. Uh, describing return to scale, return to scale needs not be uniform across all possible levels of output. For example, at a lower level of output, the firms may have an increasing return to scale because when you double it, so it's again very uh, small 
quantity or a capacity so it is possible that it's going to be double or increasing return to scale but constant and eventually decreasing return to scale at a higher level of output so in figure uh, we can see here uh, return to scale uh, with these uh, iso cons so when the firm's production uh, process exhibit constant return to scale as shown by the movement along uh, the line A uh, 0 uh, A in part 1 the isocons are equally spaced as output increased uh, proportionally so uh, isocons are equally spaced uh, <clears throat> so the firm's production function exhibit increasing return to scale less than twice the amount of both inputs in, uh, is needed to increase production from 10 to 20 substantially less than three times the inputs are needed to produce uh, 30 units so return to scale vary considerably across firms and industry other things being equal the greater the returns to scale the great, larger the firms in an industry are likely to be and in the second figure uh, so here we see that these iso cons are equally distance so we can say that these are constant return to scale uh, if the distance by increasing the output we increasing the inputs like from 5 to 10 doubling the inputs so you see here by doubling the inputs the iso cons are getting closer and closer then it is means that it is increasing returns to scale uh, one of the practical example for returns of scale we can see in the carpet industry uh, innovations have reduced cost and generally increased carpet production. Innovation along with the competition have worked together to reduce the real carpet prices. Carpet production is capital intensive. Over time, the major carpet manufacturers have increased the scale of their operations by putting larger and more efficient tufting machines into larger plants. At the same time, the use of labor in these plants also uh, has increased significantly. So the result, proportional increase in the inputs have resulted in a more than a proportional increase in output, exhibit a, uh, increasing return to scale. Uh, most smaller corporate manuf manufacturers have found that small change in scale have a little uh, or no effect on output. So we can therefore characterize the carpet industry as one in which there are constant return to scale for relatively small plants, but increasing return to scale for a larger plants. So we can see practically that where the uh, uh, constant or increasing return to scale exist in the carpet industry. So this is all what we want to discuss from this chapter number six. So chapter number six is focused only on, on explaining these ideas of uh, production function. Uh, uh, and then we also discuss about budget constraint. Uh, then we uh, talk about the uh, isocons uh, and uh, the slope of the isocont which is MRTS marginal rate of technical substitution uh, and we see also a very specific shapes of isocons for a specific relationship like a Leontov, uh, Leontov uh, function or uh, the function uh, is a, uh, a perfect substitute function uh, in which there is a, a, a straight line. Uh, then later on we will uh, talk about the returns to scale if we increase all the inputs uh, with a certain uh, level like uh, double uh, the output is doubling or uh, more than double less than double or exactly equal to double so these are uh, increasing constant or decreasing return to scale so these are the things that we uh, discuss in the uh, in this chapter uh, in chapter number seven we're going to optimize or we can call it that cost minimization uh, through again Lagrangian function. So let's uh, see uh, again in, in chapter number uh, seven videos. Bye bye.